All right, with our, that, um, we are actually four, three minutes, three minutes early. Uh, our first item of uh, official business uh, on the agenda and unfinished business calendar is court rules committee proposed rule changes. And we have the chair of the court rules and procedure committee, Aisham uh, Revis with us. I'll invite uh, Mr. Revis to uh, sit at the head table. You'll, uh, governors, you'll note that there are materials uh, on page seven of our regular materials. Hopefully you've had a chance to take a look at that. And uh, Mr. Revis is joining us from having presented to us on a prior board meeting. And so welcome back. Welcome to Southwest Washington. Glad you made the trip down and I'll turn it over to you. Ah, uh, there we are. Let's try calibrating this. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good morning, everyone. Apologies for uh, um, the impromptu sound check there. Um, <clears throat> this is, uh, I'm, again, I'm honored to um, serve as the chair of the Court Rules and Procedures Committee. We have a series of proposed rule changes, which the committee has um, voted to send on to the board and recommend for adoption. I wanted to go through those this morning. I'll um, heed the, the president's call to stay focused. I'll try and make this uh, uh, fairly expeditious. I did have a uh, um, uh, just a short PowerPoint to keep organized. I don't know if it'd be possible to call that up. The um, possibility to put up a PowerPoint Mr. Nolte. Um, I had shared that and well, no, no matter if that, if that's not going to happen, I can simply go, simply go through this. So we had a, a, a series of um, proposals to the, the, uh, um, the CRLJs, the, uh, um, the civil rules for the courts of limited jurisdiction, um, one proposed change to the rules of appellate procedure um, and a, let's see, um, and several uh, proposed changes to the rules for appeal from decisions of limited jurisdiction. Um, just like to go through those fairly quickly. There was a memo uh, giving a high level overview of those uh, proposals, which was submitted to the board. Take the, uh, uh, the CRLJ proposals up first. And actually, let me back up and just say all these, uh, the uh, Court Rules and Procedure Committee um, put together draft versions of these rules, which were sent out for stakeholder comment. Um, we did receive stakeholder comment, um, which were generally uh, uh, positive. Um, you know, the comments we did receive uh, supported most of the proposals. There was some suggestions to the RALJ uh, proposals, which I'll discuss when I get there, which um, we made changes to our draft based on the feedback that the committee received. First up, the uh, CRLJ uh, proposals. This is actually um, the bulk by page count um, of the material that was submitted. Um, I'm going to treat it fairly uh, uh, quickly. What we did is um, our committee had noted that the CRLJs had uh, not been updated in some time to reflect um, gender neutral language um, as the, uh, the civil rules had in, at some point in the past. So our uh, uh, subcommittee acts did um, yeoman's work in scouring through those and uh, changing all the, the instances of gendered language to uh, gender neutral language. And um, I believe there are, well, I'm not going to count them up real quickly, but there are a, a, a number of uh, changes to um, uh, uh, rules throughout the CRLJs, which affect those changes. Um, we received just, um, to the extent that anyone commented on them uh, from the stakeholders, the, the commentary was positive. Uh, next, I do want to uh, uh, talk about the 
suggested change to the um, rules of appellate procedure that is uh, um, RAP 2.2. And the change that we had suggested here was um, uh, a clarification. This was um, to RAP 2.2. And this is um, in the uh, light of a, uh, a recent 2020 uh, a Supreme Court case. And this comment is meant to resolve an ambiguity which was resolved in that Supreme Court case about when the um, when the clock starts ticking on uh, the time to file a, a notice of appeal when a summary judgment has dismissed of all substantive claims, but there is still a pending um, uh, motion for for fees. Um, and uh, I note that uh, it looks like Mr. Nolte is working on the the um, PowerPoint. Oh, excellent. Um, okay, it looks like the PowerPoint is up now. Um, if we can just uh, um, go forward. Let's see. Um, next slide. And next slide. Uh, next slide. Uh, next slide. Uh, next slide. Next slide. And okay, good. That's where we are. You're right. So this clear is again clarifies when the clock for the time for appeal begins running um, after judgment on the merits with a uh, pending fees or cost motion. Uh, the Supreme Court case was Denny versus Richland. Uh, if we can have the next slide, please. And the proposed change was to add a comment um, encapsulating the holding in uh, Denny versus Richland, uh, just to make clear how this rule is supposed to apply. Um, and I believe we didn't receive specific stakeholder comment on this proposed change. Can I have the next slide, please? And the next slide. Excuse me, Mr. President. Uh, Governor uh, Stevens, Stevens or Parliamentarian Stevens? Yeah, no, uh, Governor, well, pardon me. Uh, the thing is, the the slides are not advancing, at least on the screen that I'm looking at, and someone else has also mentioned that. I don't know what's going on. I only have on my screen the, the title slide. Oh. How about now? Better. <laughs> now they're gone. Now they're gone. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Bear with let's, us. Let's, if, 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 if it's not a problem, we can proceed without the slides. Okay, I think, go, uh, go ahead. I apologize for the, uh, the technical difficulties. Technology is the, the source and solution to many problems. So, um, so RALJ, the recommended changes, um, many of them are simply um, stylistic or modernizing language or um, uh, uh, making changes for, for uh, clarity or um, uh, consistency. Uh, there were two substantive changes I want to address first. Um, one is to RALJ uh, 6.2 and the other is to RALJ 8.1. So RALJ uh, 6.2 um, governs the transmittal of records of proceedings from the, um, the, the trial court, the court of limited jurisdiction to the, uh, um, the, the reviewing court. And our recommended change is to insert language directing the trial court clerk uh, to number the papers sequentially from the beginning to the end, including any supplemental clerk's papers, regardless of which party designated them. And this makes RALJ uh, 6.2 track with the, uh, no, here we are, uh, track with the, the corresponding rule of appellate procedure. Um, oh, if we can advance the slide. Uh, if, we, if we could just advance the slide. Uh, these are these are just uh, dealing with the the uh, the stylistic changes. Um, keep going through these. Uh, keep uh, next slide. Here we are. Uh, yes, it require the trial clerk um, to number the pages um, in the record. It's consistent with the corresponding uh, rule of appellate procedure. 
Um, and the hope is that it would resolve a situation where parties would be numbering the pages on their own, um, leading to inconsistent um, designation of pages and causing some confusion. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so the uh, proposed language is inserted into um, our um, RALJ 6.2a, and it's there on the screen. And I believe I had read that earlier. And next slide, please. And I believe the feedback we received on that was also positive. And uh, just for clarification, the stakeholders that this went out to included the uh, District and Municipal Court Judges Association and the District and Municipal Court Administrators Association. So we would have anticipated there is going to be a logistic challenge uh, to the uh, the clerks who are asking to take on this additional duty that 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 would have showed up in the stakeholder comment. The proposed change to RALJ 8.1. Um, this is the RLJ which uh, um, deals with who may present oral argument. Um, and the RLJ as it exists now um, requires that a party of record um, who has failed to file a brief may still present oral argument um, by leave of the court. Um, uh, our committee felt that this led to a situation where sometimes, uh, you know, the party who had filed a brief would be uh, uh, surprised at oral argument by, you know, what was argued by a party who hadn't filed a brief. And this RLJ is not consistent with the corresponding rules of appellate procedure, which does require that um, a party file a brief uh, before presenting oral argument. Our first draft rule, uh, if we could uh, advance the slide. Actually, I guess uh, the first draft of this rule um, simply made the RLJ track the RAP. So a, a party of record um, may um, essentially may only present oral argument if they had filed a brief. We received uh, comment on this draft rule from the District and Municipal Court Judges Association um, asking that some discretion be retained on the court and also suggesting that this only apply to represented parties uh, since there would be more pro se litigants um, making RALJ appeals and it was felt that it would be an access to justice issue that they might be uh, disadvantaged, disproportionately disadvantaged in this situation. Uh, so the committee acted on those suggestions, um, added language that this applies to represented parties only, and inserted additional language giving discretion to the courts uh, to <clears throat> grant a continuance to allow for briefing if a party had failed to uh, uh, present briefing and still wished to present argument. Um, after the our committee had voted to recommend this uh, proposed change to the board, we received an, ad an additional comment uh, from an attorney who believed that the word represented should be struck so it would apply to everyone whether or not they're represented. Obviously, this happened after our committee had already taken action. So uh, um, that comment is not reflected in the rule that we we're proposing, but it is at odds with the other stakeholder feedback which we did receive. I'll just say the remainder of the changes to the RLJs were uh, for clarity or um, modernization of language. So those were uh, stylistic, not substantive changes. Were there any questions about these, uh, these proposed rules? I, I move you. to approve. All right, hold on one second. Thank you, Mr. Revis, for uh, your presentation and your summary. We have a motion from Governor Peterson to approve. Do I have a second? And a second from Governor Clark. Further questions for Mr. Revis or uh, comments? Uh, Governor Knight. Thank you very much for your presentation. I just wanted to follow up on, on the last topic that you were discussing on the RALJ rule regarding uh, <clears throat> the, propose, the proposal to strike the word represented. Mm -hmm. um, can you uh, sort of expand on why the committee 
did not take the, the, the feedback into uh, consideration regarding treating pro se's and represented parties equally? Is there a, is there a basis for that? Uh, certainly. Um, the, again, the, the draft proposal that the committee originally put together um, would have applied both to represented and unrepresented parties um, and uh, would not have allowed discretion to the court to allow a party to present argument um, if they had not filed a brief. And in that way, the initial draft proposal uh, tracked the corresponding rule of appellate procedure. It was changed to uh, uh, preserve court discretion to continue uh, a hearing to allow briefing and to only apply to represented parties based on the feedback we received from the district and municipal courts judges association. Um, so our committee felt that since these were the, uh, um, you know, this is the, the association of judges who were dealing with these cases every day and they felt that that additional leeway was uh, was you know a, a good thing for the folks that they were seeing in their courts. Uh, we gave that weight um, and made the changes which led to the proposal that is currently before the board. The additional comment which we received recommending that the word recommended be uh, uh, removed again, um, we essentially received after we had sent our proposal uh, to the board. We we received it last week. Um, so it's not reflect, the committee didn't have time to vote on it. Um, I won't speculate what the committee would have voted, but um, because we had already voted to add the word uh, represented to our proposed changes, I'm not sure that we would have then took it back out again. Um, but that, I mean, procedurally, there simply wasn't time for the committee to consider that additional comment I'm raising it to the uh, uh, to the board so you can know uh, what was communicated to us and indeed that um, that uh, a practitioner may make comment to the the board of governors as well, um, explaining the the reason that they felt that the the proposal should be changed. Thank you, um, Governor Knight. Do you have any additional questions? Okay. Uh, any other governors, questions, comments? And glancing to the virtual governors, not seeing any. All right, I'll proceed to a roll call vote where uh, the, the vote is to approve the rule proposed changes. Is that correct, Executive Director Nevin? It would be to approve sending the proposed changes to the court. All right. Governor An Angevel. Aye. Governor Higginson. Aye. Governor Boyd. Aye. Governor Clark. Aye. Governor Grabicki. Aye. Governor Pertzer. Governor Dresden. Aye. Governor Sayani. Governor William Ruth. Aye. Governor Peterson. Yes. Governor McBride. Aye. Governor Abel. Aye. Governor Knight. Aye. Governor Stevens. Aye. I have 12 in favor, no opposition, no abstentions. Is that what you have, Executive Director Nevitt? Yes. All right. Thank you, Mr. Revis. We appreciate you coming down and uh, presenting to us today. Uh, the board has accepted uh, the proposed changes and we wish you luck. Uh, thank you, Mr. President.